Welcome to this second live stream recital. I'm Craig Simmons, Minister of Music here at First Congregational Church in Greenwich, and I'm honored to perform this recital, which is comprised of music by romantic composers. Here's a quick lesson in the eras in music history. Like last month's recital of Johann Sebastian Bach, the Baroque era in music history is defined by Bach's birth and death dates, which were 1685 to 1750. People often think of classical music, but forget that there's a classical era that exists between the Baroque era and the Romantic era, roughly 1750 to 1830. After 1830, the Romantic era arrives and continues until approximately 1900. The music I'll perform today falls squarely in the Romantic period. The opening piece we'll hear is by Belgian composer Joseph Jongen, who lived from 1873 to 1953. It's a special piece to me because I played it, this piece for my senior recital in high school at Interlaken way back in 1980. Jongen was a very precocious youngster and was admitted to the local conservatory at the age of seven, where he spent 16 years there studying organ, piano, and won numerous prizes in composition, piano, and organ. At 13, he began to compose, and by the time he had written Opus I, he had dozens of works to his name. Today's first work, Chorale, was written around 1910 or 1911, and explores the color of our first church organ, starting from the softer sounds, gradually growing to full organ. Enjoy Corral by Joseph Jongen.
Now we move to the music of Felix Mendelssohn, who lived from 1809 to 1847 and was based in Leipzig and Berlin. He was an organist, pianist, and composer. Are you noticing a trend here? Mendelssohn wrote dozens of pieces for piano, some concertos, incidental music for operas and plays. He started writing for organ from the age of 11 until his death in 1847. He wrote six sonatas and three preludes and fugues. The next piece I'll play is the middle of those three preludes and fugues and is in the key of G major. The prelude is a pastoral feel in 6-8 time and has a very calming effect on the listener. The fugue is solid and has a firm feel with a theme weaving throughout the fugue. On a personal note, this piece was the final work on my third and last doctoral recital in 1997. So the first two pieces on this recital today bookend my educational career from high school studies at Interlochen in 1976, ending in 1997 with my doctoral degree. Here is Mendelssohn's Prelude and Fugue in G Major.
The next set of pieces are by a German composer, Siegfried karg ellert who lived from 1877 to 1933. First Church folks might recognize his name from seeing it in the bulletin on Sundays for either preludes or postludes. karg ellert became a passion of mine during my undergraduate work when I heard a piece of his on the radio. Long before the days of the internet, I scrambled to find out what it was and quickly ordered the score and included it in my undergraduate recital. Over the years, I've researched and grabbed as many scores of his as I could. There's something about his compositions, which are similar to Max Rager or Franz Liszt and others in that era, which are very dense, thick textures, highly intricate, and technically challenging. I've attempted to play those works by those composers, and the joke amongst organists is often, too many notes, too many notes. So I skipped working on those. Carl Gellert's work, however, which is similar to those giants in density and technical requirements, connected with me on a different level. These five pieces are from a set of eight pieces entitled A Cycle of Eight Short Pieces, written in his Impressionistic period at the end of his life between 1930 and 1933, the year of his death. And they are dedicated to his daughter, Kitty.
I'd like to thank you for joining me for this live stream recital. It's not the same as having an audience in the room, and the listeners certainly miss the feeling of the organ reverberating through the space. But we're in a different time, and I'm grateful to be able to share some beautiful music with you through the wonder of technology. As always, I extend a debt of gratitude to Rory Young and Danny Young, who are behind the scenes running sound and the cameras. Without their work, these programs would not be possible. The final work on this recital is a transcription, which is an organ annotation of something that wasn't originally written for the instrument. But this piece really was written for organ, at least in part. Louis Vierne is one of the most famous composers for organ. He was born in 1870 in France and was nearly blind because of congenital cataracts. In 1892, at the age of 22, he served as assistant organist to Charles-Marie Vidor at Saint-Sulpice, who wrote the famous Vidor Toccata. And in 1900, he moved to Notre Dame Cathedral, where he served as principal organist until his death 37 years later. In 1899, Vierne completed his Messe Solennelle, or Solemn Mass, for mixed choir and two organs and was first performed at Saint-Sulpice in 1901 with Vidor playing the gallery organ at the back of the church and Vierne was at the chancel organ in the front of the church where the choir was located. This transcription is from the Kyrie from the Solemn Mass and is by Alexander Schreiner. Schreiner was one of the most famous organists on the staff of the Salt Lake Tabernacle, which is the smaller of the two buildings where the iconic Mormon Tabernacle Choir performs. Schreiner combined both elements of this choir and organ parts into one composition. The louder portions of the piece, usually, usually associated with the back organ parts, contrasted at times with the softer portions, signifying the softer choral parts. This is one of my favorite choral pieces, and I've had the pleasure of playing the organ for countless concerts and church services, and also in several different choirs as a singer for this gorgeous piece. I dedicate this performance to a very dear friend who passed away two weeks ago, Kimberly Arnoldi Strickland. Kim and I were both in college choir that toured England and Wales in the early 1980s, and I played the organ for the original choral version. Here is the Andante Maestoso, or the Kyrie, from the Solemn Mass by Louis Vierne. 